In today's episode, I speak to Katrina Roddy about the corporate breakup. We discuss how to get through it, the mindset that you need, and what it's like when you are a corporate refugee and the need to be vulnerable to be able to run your own business successfully. Listen up to the rest of the conversation. Before we begin our conversation, here is a quick shout out to the Pathologically Curious. Check out the Maverick Paradox magazine. It's a digital magazine written by Mavericks for business owners and professionals. You can find the magazine at themaverickparadox.com. The magazine's aim is to provoke Maverick leadership everywhere. Welcome to the Maverick Paradox podcast, where we explore what it is to be a maverick and discover effective modes of leadership. I am Judith Germain, and my mission is to propel the maverick mindset into a world where character and integrity will ultimately have a higher premium than personality and bureaucracy. So thank you for joining me on this journey. If you would like to continue with me, then please subscribe to my podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or one of the other popular podcast platforms. And today, our guest is Katrina Roddy. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Judith. How are you? I'm pretty good. You? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Excellent. Tell the audience who you are. My name is Katrina Roddy. I am best-selling author of Steal Your Skills from Corporate, I am also an entrepreneur coach, and I coach on the mindset it takes to transition out of an employee status to becoming a new entrepreneur. Now, that is really needed because I see, because I also work with entrepreneurs as well as, um, well, I work in the both rooms, the entrepreneurs and in organizations, but the entrepreneurs, you can tell that they are just out of corporate because they still have that corporate mindset, which doesn't work when you're running your own business. It does not work. And just think about this, Judy. I spent 30 years in corporate, so I was truly in a box. And once you come out, if you don't change that mindset, and someone had to you know, direct me to change it. Mm-hmm. If you don't change that mindset, you're waiting for people to tell you what to do. Think about this. Someone has told you when to go to lunch, who your clients are, what time to come in, how often you're going to work, what job you're going to do. They told you all of that. And now when you become an entrepreneur, you're like, I have all of this free time. And then it hits you that I have all of this free time. I have to figure out what to do. <laughs> That's interesting. But do, do corporates really give that much micromanagement for a knowledge worker these days? Um, I do think so. I think corporate still, you know, they direct, you know, everyone to do, at least for the work that I did. I worked in corporate insurance. Mm -hmm. And um, so they would tell me I had my clients. I had some fabulous clients, Mm -hmm. but they would say, these are your clients. And if anything happens, this is a thing. When you leave, those are still the company's clients. They're not yours. So um, they still give direction and how you should do things and when you should do things. And, um, And you can definitely tell, like you said in the beginning, when you when you meet someone who came out of corporate because the entrepreneurs were kind of waiting for someone to tell us what to do next. And I thought that, you know, putting things together to help give people a blueprint through my book would at least give them some guidance and give them a toolkit to kind of help them along the way because I learned these things through trial and error. And the other thing that comes with it is once you break up from corporate, I call it the corporate breakup. Once you break up from corporate, um, no one really addresses that with you. To a certain degree, they do, but not really. And what I mean by that is when you're in a relationship breakup, Judy, yeah, I don't know about you, but I've been in, I've been in some in my past, right? Mm-hmm. And your girlfriends or your guy, for whoever, your friends in general will come and they'll support you and they'll have these conversations and help you kind of get through it. They may bring wine over and they will talk to you and say, you know, work on yourself before you get back out there. Take some time for yourself. Relax. When you break up from corporate, they're like, get another job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so that's when I, you know, I started thinking about the corporate breakup because when you break up from corporate, you get the same things, the same emotional ties that you get 
when you have a regular re um, relationship breakup, there's anxiety, there's anger, there's sleep disturbances. All of these things happen and you need to heal from them before you can move on. Does that make sense? It does. I'll tell you what particular makes sense to me is the letting go bit because every job I've ever had that I've left um, to go into another job or even when I left corporate to work for myself, you have that period of time where, you, you know, you suddenly remember something and you're like, oh, and you kind of want to phone them up and say, remember, so and so is going to call about this or and you have to kind of let it go and yeah. just let it go. And just <laughs> because it's like, oh, yeah, you know, because like things that would come up at a certain time, and you're like, oh, I wonder if they're going to remember to do that. No, I've left now. Yeah, let, it yeah. Go. <laughs> let it go I love the idea of a corporate breakup because you do have those and I suppose you can have good breakups you know like you left they're happy that you left because they want you know they know that it's time for you to leave and you have that you know you, you go back and see them sometimes you know it's kind of really amicable and you know maybe that they can't find a file so they call you it's all you know that sort of stuff is all great but then there's that as I say that horrible breakup maybe and there's no one to help you in that mourning process yes. and I think you know I think when you go into your own business as well you see it a lot with people especially if they were really senior in the corporate world and it's that kind of you leave you leave the office and at first it feels like you're on holiday isn't it so you know so you go maybe you go from maybe you go on holiday or you go shopping or you go to yeah. a restaurant or and you just hang out with your friends when it's the lunchtime and stuff and and then it, after a while it suddenly occurs to you that there is no more money coming until you actually generate that and that's where you're saying about what the clients thing is isn't it whereas before you know even if you was I don't know a top salesman or something you've still got the reputation of that company when you're going to get the sales but when you're on your own you have to generate the reputation you have to generate the credibility and it's quite different in that aspect isn't it that's absolutely right that's exactly what i'm talking about um i was on the high end of in my corporation and an executive level so we didn't see it coming because we worked in what we call a national account space so if you can think of some of the largest accounts worldwide mm -hmm. we probably were a part of that and we were in the relationship building and you know, you think about salespeople and how they have to prospect. But when you work on accounts that large, you're prospecting three to five years out because wow. that's when they're changing their insurance. They're not changing it every day. You don't talk to people every day. So what I got really good at was relationship building because they want to see you. They want to see what you're doing, how you're doing things. They want to get to know you a little bit better before they just put their, this is a lot of money they have before they put that with you and how you work with others, that kind of thing. But when you come out and you're on your own and you are you have to prospect every day and you have to build it, you're trying to, I, for me, I was trying to build these relationships and keep moving. And you just learn a whole different aspect of what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the hard work that it goes into. Um, I literally thought my natural progression was to work as an independent contractor. But when I was, you know, when I came out of corporate and I started thinking about being a 1099 or an independent contractor, it wasn't quite the fit I was looking for. I still had some type of independence when I worked in, in the bigger corporate. And then when I started becoming an independent contractor, they're like, do this, do that. And I, I just wasn't used to that. So <laughs> I literally cried for a full year. Oh man. Even though I had a job, but I was just oh, like, how is this work? Like, you know, you, it felt like I didn't fit in. I felt like, um, you know, vulnerability, you, you have to be vulnerable because I held a lot of it inside because of either embarrassment or, you know, you still have people, you've been in this industry for a while. You have people still watching what you do and how you're doing things and they know that. And you build relationships differently because like as an employee, yeah. you know, it's a different type of investment. But when you're a contractor coming in, they, you know, you're employed to do the work, do it quickly, get on with it, but and you don't have to, you don't have time to be part of the politics and have time, you know. So there's you're always an outsider, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you often are paid more than the employee, so there's because they know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of that has to do with the politics. To be honest mm -hmm. with you, because at that point they know they can pay you more because they're not giving you the health insurance that the company has. They're not giving you any, 
any of the other things that the company gives their employees so they can pay you a little bit more, but they know you're not going to be part of them. So that's interesting. It's very interesting concept, but I just, you know, I'm out here to teach people to be vulnerable. You know, I like to say, go ahead. As like, did you have that thing? Because like when I was in corporate, I was very senior. And then you get used to your words having weight. <laughs> and then you leave to be on your own. And your words have no weight. To be no weight. No yeah. one knows who you are. And it's like a shock, isn't it? It's like, what now? What? <laughs> I remember this. I do really. That's one thing. It's like many years ago now. But I remember that's the one biggest culture shock that you yeah. could be networking in a community of people and people are asking, you know, talking to you and asking you questions about stuff. And they like, you know, you get used to people knowing that you know your stuff or whatever. Then people are saying, so because you're new, you're new into like, so do you, I remember somebody was talking and I said, this is what I do for a living. And then they looked and I wasn't really young. I was like <laughs> in my early 30s. I think I looked a little bit young. And they said, do you, are you looking for someone to practice on? And I was looking at like, <laughs> I don't need to practice. I, like, you know, I was like, this was like, are you looking for a practice client? And I look at them like, no. <laughs> but, I, I, but they weren't being rude. Do you know what I mean? It was just exactly. that kind of like, oh, yeah, just that a corporate, you know, you don't look, you know, senior or whatever. So clearly, it, I felt like, do you think I'm, it felt to me like, you, you think I'm a child or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> But it wasn't until I spoke to somebody and, you know, those were the days of looking younger than you are. But, yeah. <laughs> but they did think I was about 10 years younger than I actually was. They thought I was in my 20s. But yeah. even so, though, it was just like, but do you, it was like, I was thinking, but when I was in my 20s, I was a senior manager then. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. yeah, it's just a big, it, it is a shock. And it's all that um, corporate blah, blah nonsense. Because like no matter you know no matter what industry you're in you have a corp- that industry has its corporate language doesn't it yes so you come out and you use the same language amongst entrepreneurs and they just look at you like you make <laughs> no sense you know <laughs> or that that's it. true though because it, it makes because like if you strip if you're not in that industry you are just it's like it's like um, peanuts you know when the teacher talks and it goes wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, don't, I used to hear it now, you know, like when you talk to somebody, you know they're just out of corporate because they're talking nonsense. You're so <laughs> right. You are so right about that. And that particularly happened to me when I became an independent contractor because I was at a senior level when I left, um, when I left big corporate. And when I went in and I'm using language and they're telling me to do these things and I'm like, who do you think I am? <laughs> It's like, funny. It's, it is funny though isn't it and I think there it's is a, a it's funny it's not arrogance but I think there's a certain um I think the more senior you are there's that you carry more stuff you you make much more you, you're much more something yeah in your statements and stuff because that's you know, that's how you got to where you were but when you're not in that environment, you do. So you say, I can see why people would need a coach because you do need to change. And one of the things I was taught, for, you know, through uh, this person in the whole networking thing that I got on really well with, was over the years, I learned to become vulnerable. And I think I didn't start to make oh. money until I became vulnerable. Yeah. And like when you're in corporate, vulnerability, especially when you're senior, isn't going to work for you if no. you don't do it in the right way and I had to shed a lot and it was hard and it took years you know yeah. to shed that you know that that kind of I know what I'm doing I'm telling you right you know that kind of to become more vulnerable and to yeah. trust more with complete strangers and stuff it was definitely a well, process. Judith if you can think about this when I worked in corporate insurance and because I worked on such large accounts, I worked um, as an underwriter at one point for professional liability, which means employment practices, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I knew the laws as it pertained to giving out personal information to keep people from profiling you or judging you. Mm -hmm. So it's to your point, it's hard to be vulnerable when you know that there are certain laws that say you're not supposed to do that. 
There are certain things that you do, you're not supposed to say in an interview. There are certain things. And then when you, you know, go out on your own and people are asking you this, you're just like, wait one minute. Why are you asking me about that? (laughs) Um, You're not supposed to, but then you start to learn the culture. And that's when you, to your point again, you have to be vulnerable. And that's what I coach people on now is because I am becoming more vulnerable. I'm telling my story. There's five things that I like for people to know when they come out of corporate. First thing, I want you to get through the feelings. Like, you know, feel it, feel the pain that comes with that. If you're having any pains, if it was a bad breakup, like a layoff or something that was unexpected, get through those feelings first, because you need to know what that feels like. And then after you get through that, the first thing I, I like to tell people in my five is make moves. Moves is an acronym for mindset reset. That's the M. And that's just basically like do some meditation, some yoga, breathing, exercises, boxing, whatever it takes to keep your mind focused on you. And the second thing is, O is open, be open to a new title. You're not going to be SVP. You're not going to be SP, whatever (laughs) you were before was and is, is two different things. So you're not that anymore. So why don't you create the CEO of your life? Be that. Be the CEO of your life. You know the, what? I, before you, move on, you always yeah. can tell someone who has just set up their new business because they're the CEO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. it's over, like, and as time goes on, they don't use that time. You know, it's different if you've got like a business with employees and stuff. But if you're a micro business and it's just you, I think it's everybody true. that comes out of corporate, especially if they're senior, is the managing they're director the, or the CEO. That's why. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I use that because I know that these are new entrepreneurs. So I want yeah, them to do that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And then the V, because I want to use corporate terms that they can relate to. When we get to the V, I talk about value your relationships. And what that means is create a personal board of directors. Mm-hmm. So you used to the term board of directors. So now create one for yourself. And there are five people on your board. And you go through, and I teach you how to find these people. They could be in your life already, but they never had a title. So now give them a title and let them help you through your journey. The E is evaluate your money situation because it's going to change. You may have to dig deep inside to just figure out where your relationship with money came from. Like for me, I'm giving you an example. I had I had very humble beginnings and my parents had very humble beginnings and my grandparents had very humble beginnings. And they're like, it just, it's a, it's circular. I mean, it's, uh-huh. it just goes through a system. And so you have to figure out what's important to you, how you're going to do these things. And because your money situation is going to change. So once you realize the relationship you have and what drives that relationship, it may be able to help you a little better when you become an entrepreneur and your money situation changes. And then the S on moves, which is number five is share your story. Be oh, vulnerable. That's the big one. If S could have been at the beginning of moves, I would have used it. (laughs) Yeah, share your story. That is so important because especially now, people only want to buy when they know you, isn't it? Yeah, it just share because you don't know who's listening. Someone else may be in your same position, but they don't know how to handle it. So now they're just listening for people who've been in similar positions that they are and say, maybe I can take that approach or maybe I can take that. But they don't know that if you don't share you don't share so yeah those are the five things those are that's my acronym for moves and i do coach people through those things because i truly believe in them now yeah that makes sense i would say that they're all really really key but i think the hardest one what i've seen for corporates is sharing the story and the mindset reset yeah Yep. I think they're the hardest ones. It is. And because you come in and someone said to me, you have to have an entrepreneur mind. And that's when it clicked that there is a mindset reset. Mm-hmm. Like I'd never thought of it before. I was just running along in my new path of trying to do things. Yes. Because people leave. So you might be, I don't know, a financial, you know, an accountant in the corporate. And then you yep. set up to be an accountant in your own right. But you don't, you still operate like a corporate, which is yeah. not, which is not going to mean you're going to last if that's what you're doing. So yeah. 
And that's, that's exactly what you said. You're still using the corporate jargon and nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and no one cares. That's the shocker as well. It's like mm-hmm. as soon as you start talking nonsense, which you will, because, you know, you spend years learning it. Yeah. That, <laughs> the people just look at you and they go, uh-huh. And it's like people just sidle off, like, you know, you're at a party and they're like looking for someone else to talk to because <laughs> you're just talking. And it's so funny because when you've been out of it for a while, you can see it so clearly. You just wonder what kind of planet you're on. But when you leave, but when you, it just happens, you're doing it's it's not your fault because no one taught you how to be an entrepreneur, but everybody no. taught you how to be a corporate bigwig yeah. or a corporate specialist or something. And I keep saying, you know, I was in corporate for 30 years. Mm. I lived in a box. I only knew the world of corporate. I only networked with other people who did what I did. I only like all of these things. It's like, so I live here in the city of Chicago. So when I walk downtown, when I was in corporate and I worked downtown and I'd go out for lunch and walk, you'd see these people with their head down and they're in their phone. And I'm like, we're at the crosswalk. If you like cars are coming everywhere, taxi cabs are everywhere. Everything is a chaos and they have their heads down. And oftentimes I would say to these individuals, hold your head up. The world's up here. Oh, and that's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. And that's how you feel coming out of corporate. All of a sudden you hold your head up and you see at least for me, I started seeing these people who are so innovative in their craft and they really had a passion for what they were doing. And like, it was so much, it was a different world for me. So I, it's like, I walked out and was like, ah, look at these people. I met a lady who was a puppet master once and she was so excited. And she's like, yeah, I work in the theater district and I make these, pu-. and I'm like, that is a job. I forgot someone has to do that. You know what, there's a lot of innovation in small businesses and it's easy to forget that. And it's all, it is the corporate world and entrepreneurial world are so different. And yeah. even, you know, even though they're operating quite often in the same spaces, it is, it's, as you said, it's a completely different mindset. It's that, and also what I, I see you probably coach people on is the relationships that they have with people change. So yeah. it's kind of, you know, your corporate friends are on holiday. Yeah. You're not on holiday because if you're not working, you're not eating. Yeah. And people don't get that. Or if you're sick and you might say, people might say, oh, just, you know, just take the day off. It's like, well, no, I've got to do X. Well, just say that. It's like, no, I've made a commitment to X company and I need to deliver yes. this thing. Yeah. Or it's going to affect my reputation or I'm going to let them down or whatever. Yeah, that's so true. I what I, the, Some of the things that I actually learned and when I say steal your skills from corporate, I really mean that when I talk to people because there's so much that you do learn there that you can tra- transfer into a new career. You know, I didn't have a problem talking to, doing presentations because that's all I've, I did. I didn't have a problem, you know, going out and, and communicating with some of the some of the C level people, just whoever I need to get as a client, I didn't have a problem doing that. I didn't have a problem with helping them budget. Like these are the things that I did in corporate that kind of carried over into my new position as an entrepreneur that I, I you know that I use, and that's what I teach people in my book. There's eight steps in there to get through it, and and one thing I do say is steal your skills. If you are good at presenting and communication, use that now to your benefit. And for those people who did not come out of corporate, think of corporate as a metaphor for life. You have some life skills, even mothers. And, you know, I know there maybe I'm just, you know, saying this, maybe there's a soccer mom, you know, for example, and she has organized things for her kids soccer team. She has organization skills. Mm -hmm. She has strategy skills. Like these are things that I help pull out of individuals when I coach them because they may not have been thinking in those terms. Okay, so let me ask you, how does somebody reset their minds? What is, are there certain steps that are common? To for a mindset reset, it's really coming down to understanding who you are as a person. So to reset that, you think about the things that you're currently doing, and then you think about where you're trying to go. 
And it's all about being curious, having curiosity, making sure that gap in curiosity is very large because at one point it is shortened because you think you know a lot of stuff already. But once you start to open up your mind and see other things and appreciate what other people are doing, you start to think on that level. And so it takes a lot of being in touch with yourself. So I like to say meditation helps with that because you get some time to really think. I like to say these breathing exercises that come through yoga does a lot of help with that because you're really learning who you are. Like you're learning how your breath works and when you get anxious and you're learning those things, what causes you to have that anxiety and then what helps you bring it back down to a level. Um, exercise does that because you're focusing, all of these things in your mindset are focused on you and being in touch with who you are. So but, changing that mindset to be vulnerable, because obviously in the corporate world, being vulnerable in most environments is a really so, dangerous thing to be. So how can you suddenly be vulnerable when you leave work? You, it, it takes time. Like you mentioned it yourself. It takes time. And it takes time because once you become an entrepreneur and you start to learn how vulnerable other people are, and you start to see that, that that is what helps. People will tell you throughout your whole entrepreneur experience to be vulnerable, be vulnerable. You have a story to tell. One thing you can think about is that helps you with that story is think about the one thing, think of one thing in your life that was, so, so to speak, a badass moment. Like what happened that made you feel so good? You're on a high and you knew this was a good moment for you. When you think of that moment and you start to share that story that happened, it makes you feel good because it's a, it's a, a story that you can share. And it just helps you ease a little bit more into sharing your story. So you'll start hearing people tell the story of, you know, how they survived, you know, maybe um, an infectious disease or how they survived. You know, for me, it was how I survived being a single mom in the city with a young black man. And how, how do I, how did I work through that? How did I survive being in corporate, raising a son? And, you know, I had a very high level position. So I started talking about that. And then you start to hear other people's stories and it just promotes you to keep doing it. But it takes some time to be a good listener to others and then being able to transfer that and say how how much can you share or how much do you want to share to become vulnerable does that make sense yeah yeah it does that makes sense okay I like that so before we end is there anything that you are absolutely dying to, to add and you was like Judy you should have just asked me this question could I have this killer answer <laughs> <laughs> there is Nothing that I'm dying to say. I just love conversations that we're having. Um, the one thing I will say is that I spent a lot of time thinking about these things. And I get so, you get so nervous when you're going to be interviewed or talking or uh, having a conversation. And the comfort that I start to get when I have, when I'm speaking with people like yourself is that you're actually willing to listen. Um, and so then I, it, it makes me, promotes me to be willing to listen to another person. So the thing, the other thing, if I'm, if I'm dying to say something, I'm dying to say thank you for the platform that allows me to, to speak and share my story. Well, thank you so much. You know, you had me on the hook with the corporate break, break up. <laughs> yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's real. It's like I've never thought of it like that, but it is because you know what? One of the breakups, I think. I discovered, well, I think everybody discovers this, regardless of whether they sat up on their own or they just go to another company, is that the friends that you have in one company don't transition into the next company. No. Nope. And they especially don't transition when you set up on your own. I mean, you might carry over one or two, but you don't carry the, you know, the, the 15 people that you went out for lunch with or, do you know what I mean? Because it's just... It's almost like for so many people is that you're you're hostage in that company to get yeah. And then when you're out, you've left them behind. Yeah. And they um, don't understand. They yeah, don't. It's like, it's like you've broken up with them. 
Yes. That is a perfect way to put it. It's like you have broken up with them almost to a point where they feel like you're an outcast. One thing I can say, Judy, is those individuals in corporate, there are so many people who didn't want to see me be an entrepreneur because of their fears. And so they project their fears onto you by saying, I just found you another job. This person's looking for someone to run this department. I thought you'd be perfect. Can they call you? And I'm like, no, I appreciate it, but no. I found I, this happened to me more than once. It continued to happen. Wow. I've had, um, you know, when my book was released, I had companies come back and say, are you thinking about entering into corporate again? Because I may have a spot for you. I'm like, I just wrote a book on how to stay out. <laughs> <laughs> That is actually funny. You write a book about not working for the corporate. <laughs> they're like, hey, you're there. They had good points there. <laughs> yeah. So these, you know, it's a lot of people. And it's a lot of it has to do with their fears. I talk to people now um, who are still in corporate. And this is what's interesting. When I started reading up and studying through, I studied some, some studies through APA, which is the American Psychology Association. And they talk about layoffs and the effects it has on people. But not only does it affect the person leaving, it also, this anxiety and these emotions are affecting the people who are staying. Because one, you just left, so they have to take your work. So now they're overworked. Two, they're anxious because they don't know when they're next. And then the third thing is, they can't figure out like where they fit and they're always thinking of one foot out the door. So I do have friends now who are on that level of thinking one foot out the door because they we've gone through a pandemic. They had to make some changes to all corporations when, you know, everything was shut down. So now they're like, I don't know if they see the value in me anymore because it's all about the bottom line for corporates. Corporations will now and forever go through layoffs and it may not have anything to do with you. Yeah. So, you know, the people who are there can become anxious and, you know, we're all of age now and um, in our, it, it, we may have gone through one through four of these layoffs and you're tired of it. So now you're thinking on your own terms of how can I start something? How can I use the skills that I have and create something that's more fulfilling to me? Because that's exactly what I did. I wanted to make sure that people understood how to make that transition out. And I had a passion for that, for teaching people and educating them on things to do. Mm -hmm. And that's good. And it's not to say that corporations are bad in themselves either, because there's plenty of really great places to work. Yeah. I suppose the, the concepts that you discuss are good for the employee as well. You know, yes. mindset, research, opportunity, they're, they're all great for a person is is happy working for companies. It's you know it's quite uh, what's quite nice about it is that it's it's useful for those internally and those externally. It is is very useful for internal and external. And I've reached out to some, you know, the company that I worked for, um, that I was an independent contract for. I realized that they have some issues with training some of their female salespeople there. And so I've reached out to them just to say, hey, I can put together a contract for you guys now that I can actually help them because they're still in this environment to help them to become as successful in their sales role. Women sell differently than men. So maybe this is something that you want to look at. So I have some companies looking now. Oh, fantastic. So Katrina, would you come back again if I found something else to talk about? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I will. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I do have a, I want to mention, I do have a website. Uh -huh. If people want to learn more about me, it is www.thecorporatebreakup.com. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Thank you once again for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Katrina as much as I enjoyed having it. At the Maverick Paradox, we improve your impact and influence by enabling you to effectively strategize, innovate, and execute. To find out more, contact us at judith at maverickparadox.com. Thank you. If you are pathologically curious and would love to find out more about the Maverick Paradox, then please subscribe to this podcast on one of the popular podcast platforms. 
Alternatively, you could explore our resources on Mavericks at maverickparadox.com or read the Maverick Paradox magazine. We publish frequently each week. If you subscribe, you will get our monthly newsletter. And let's not forget my book, The Maverick Paradox, The Secret Power Behind Successful Leaders. For those that love a good discussion, you could apply to join our exclusive Facebook group. Finally, if you would like to work with us or are interested in the Maverick at work, check out maverickparadox.co.uk. Thank you.